I just love how I'm about 50 parts in, in now and I still have no idea how the different plot lines tie together. For example, the whole Shogun thing, the new gen murders, police investigation, Takumi's stuff, the whole D sword stuff, how Yura also factors into the plot. I am kind of leaning towards Shogun actually not being antagonistic, I think. Like I said before, the whole Nanami quest to rescue stuff. It almost seems like he was trying to motivate uh, Takumi in summoning his D-sword for some purpose. And since Senna and ISA also have these swords, it would suggest that they're all on the same side, so to speak. And I don't think that Senna or ISA are antagonistic, so I'm not even sure what's going on, what they're battling against. But I guess we'll find out later. Another investigation meeting was convened in the Shibuya Police Department's conference room today. All of the detectives were exhausted and looked exasperated at the thought of how many hours this fruitless meeting might continue. Around when Matsunaka began listening to the individual investigators' reports, one unexpectedly raised his hand and gingerly stood up. Not only Matsunaka, but the other detectives and also Sua, who had been sitting beside Ban, listened to him with dubious expressions. Wearing his usual frivolous and friendly smile, Ban gave them a quick bow with his head, then looked around. え、先日、インターネット上に投稿されたいわゆる集団ダイブの映像についてなんですが、実はちょっとした発見をしまして… え? To our face of blatant surprise, it was expected because Ban had investigated the film without saying a single word about it to Sua, but he was supposed to have paired up with him. I read that sentence wrong, but sorry. <laughs> then again, the reason for it wasn't that he wanted to keep it a secret, but rather... Ban Cable. Kimi was probably the head of the police. It seems that he just wants to shield Tua from any repercussions. Why did you look at the Shudan Dive? Well, that was pretty much what it came down to. Ban had taken independent action, ignoring instructions from headquarters, and if he got Tua involved in that, a young detective with a bright future ahead of him would get tied down by his superiors. He had avoided that. Ah, uh, well... Laughing foolishly, Bond took two annotated photos from a file close at the hand. He sticks them to the blackboard with magnets. Kora, dochi mo shudan dive no genba to natta Cornelia Stawa okujo no shashin desu. Okay。That's quite a difference. Does that suggest that the video was fake? 何か違いに気づきませんか? As the meter full of insinuations, Ban slowly surveyed the large conference room before finally looking straight at Matsunaga. Kimi wa bengoshi ni demo natta tsumori ga ne. Yoten wa wakariyasuku setsumei shita mae. I mean, don't you see the difference? Next to Ban's silver cat craning his neck, nor did the other detectives make any effort to hide their confusion. Aikei ga ne? Jigao n desu.
投稿映像のカメラは北東へ向かってる5人が転落したのが北東だったから間違いないで映像では3分29秒から約15秒間カメラが左右へ大きく触れるんですがその時に東に向いた時の映像がこの右側の写真なわけですコーネリアスタワーの東つまり六本木方面ですね東京タワーが夜景の中にしっかり映ってる赤いから目立ちますねでもねもう一つよく目立つものが映ってないんですよよく目立つもの Eisner wrote, stroking the scraps of beard on his jaw with his hand, and put a self deprecating smile. Doppongi Bills, this is you. Ah! The conference room burst into a commotion. To be honest, that's a kind of slower reaction, I'd say. <laughs> Indeed, one couldn't see the light of the Doppongi Bills building in the photo taken from the uploaded video. The photo ban had snapped yesterday, on the other hand, had clearly uncaptured both Tokyo Tower and the light. でたまたま見つけたんですがコーネリアスタワーのホテルロビーにタワー完成当時のパネルが展示してありましてねそのパネルの一つがこれ。This was a daytime photograph, not a night one. Doppongi Bills が映ってますよね。建設中ですが。The room in the conference room swelled. Much never felt silent and regarded the photo sternly. Cornelius Tower の完成は2001年。Doppongi Bills の完成は2003年。タワー完成当時の写真では当然ながら六本木ビルズは建設中でまだ高さもほとんどないだが集団ライブが起きたのは今年2008年で映ってなきゃおかしいですよね六本木ビルズちなみに投稿映像に細工された形跡はなかった。Wait, so if it isn't fake, then it would almost sound like some kind of alternate dimension stuff. つまり、何が言いたいんだ You'll never believe that. I saw losing his patience, m a t s u n a g a u r g e m o n in a grumpy sounding voice. まさか先輩この映像が撮られたのは2003年以前つまり5年以上前って言いたいんですかおいおいすばオンショーズストラップクラストファーレンウェッサテクサクリワディフメントエンプライニアドマイトヘスヨングディテクティブス I couldn't help but seem much more sketchy. Once Brunus, I bet whether or not to say it, had returned to the earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Baka bakashi. Shoset no yomi sugi dewa nai ga ne. Ezo ni utsutti ilu higai sha gonin no kawa itchi shti ilu nda. Ale ga gonen mai no mono no hazu ga nai. Son. つまらないことを調べている暇があったら聞き込みの一つでもしたらどうだ警部補ああ今のは聞かなかったことにするそれと後で話があるから会議が終わったら残りたまえ I mean if there is a conspiracy behind the scenes then I wouldn't be surprised if that the highest up Police would would be bribed by somebody to just sweep it all under the rug. 
and let out a small sigh and gave up and sat down. Well, it wasn't like he thought anyone would believe him. Lethargically waving his fan at himself, he inwardly muttered sour grapes. That said, on himself hadn't determined to answer the why the video didn't show Rapungi Bills. After I found out that an enemy was alive, a doctor came to me and asked me a number of simple questions. There were questions to determine whether or not my condition was back to normal. As I answered half-heartedly, I made the decision to leave the hospital before my mom arrived. How could I possibly face my family? After having been shamed in front of the whole nation. Besides, if an enemy came, I was positive I'd be overjoyed and started bawling. And without any idea of how I felt, an enemy would yell at me straight face saying, What made me worry so much, you idiot? Baka. When I envisioned that scene, I almost fainted from embarrassment. As a result, I decided to be the strategic retreat before I fell into the such a situation. After nibbling a little bit on the horrible breakfast they gave me, I furtively left the hospital room. I descended to the first floor and crossed the lobby. This was the hospital hadn't opened yet. The lobby, which was normally bulging at the seams with old people, was now quiet and still. I managed to breathe out through the front entrance. Fortunately, the automatic doors opened properly for me. Nurses and physicians might get angry at me for slipping out of the hospital on my own. But all I had to do was avoid getting back until things had cooled down. There shouldn't be any issue with the hospitalization fee, but I left a note for my mom with. Please pay them later. Oh, that's so easy. That's not how things work. I mean, I'm not sure how much it costs to be hospitalized for a short amount of time. But I can't imagine it to be a cheap bill. So I spent the night at the hospital. I felt physically fine. And psychologically, knowing that anatomy was okay, that made my gloom lessen considerably. I mean, last year when I was at the hospital for a week, I think the biggest part of the would be bill would be, in fact, Renting a hospital bed, staying the night. Proceeding with great care in case Shogun and Yua were lying in wait for me along the way, I hastened back to my base. <sighs> I had come back. My emotional state was utterly different from when I left here last night. Of course, now I felt refreshed. In fact, I wanted to say a word or two to yesterday's self. I mean, that's very easy in hindsight. You take the bait too easily. An enemy is going to be okay even without you freaking out like that, lol. <laughs> that kind of thing. But yesterday had been really tough. Anything and everything had been tough. In the morning, there was a weird phone call. An earthquake took place. My head, hard disk data got cleared. I'd be forced to witness ISIS failed suicide attempt. Jokun had emailed me. He had sent a severed hand. Severed hand. My hyper mood drained away in an instant. I swallowed jerkily and cast my line of sight at the fridge. That hand was in there yesterday before leaving here after considering what to do about it with my 
Let's come up with his mind. I stuck the hand in the fridge for the time being. If left it hanging around outside, it might rot. And the smell of blood would lie thick. Sci-fi anime and movies often use the premise that people can remain in a state of apparent death for hundreds of years as long as you keep them frozen in storage. In a word, I landed on the same sort of idea. Yesterday, I honestly thought that once landing me was safe, if it hadn't was preserved with even a little of its former freshness, Maybe they could surgically remove what we move and attach it. <coughs> if it's written on his hand, whose would it be? And how was I supposed to account for the cell phone and the bangle? Unless my eyes were mistaken, those definitely belong to an enemy. And I called her. I have connected me to the cell phone and that the hand grip. Or else everything was pass included as part of the trap had laid for me. Was it really possible to perfectly replicate Nanami's arm? <laughs> Although I seriously didn't want to. A human hand? Disgusting. Recalling it nearly made me throw up. Even if it were an enemies. Simply because of that, I couldn't let it stay in my fridge for who know how long. At this rate, I won't be able to chill my coke either. For a second I thought of giving it to the police, but on second thought, it suspected me of being the new gen perpetrator. Under those circumstances, it'd be suicidal to call the police member, I assume. I told them, please take servant head from me. What should I do? Maybe I ought to throw it away. But I felt like it'd be bad to chuck it if it were an enemy's arm, hypothetically speaking. For starters, was it okay to throw a human hand in the garbage? If you were going to, this belong on burnable garbage. Unburnable garbage. I scratched my head. Nothing would come out of pondering it. For now, I should take a more careful look at the bracelet the hand was wearing and the cell phone it held. See whether they were enemies or not. I stood in front of the fridge and gripped this handle. I closed my eyes and took one of or three deep breaths. I was tempted to call Remy and have her examine it in my place. But I shouldn't chase away that temptation. Remy might be my ally, but finding a human hand in my fridge would make anyone pull back. If I screwed up, she might grow wary of me and send me to the police. The only option was to do something about it myself. <laughs> so. I cut my teeth. I took another two deep breaths. And my mind made up. I pulled the handle. Okay. Um, I didn't spot it anywhere. The handle that definitely put it there yesterday. I had wrapped it in aluminium foil. I left it on the top level. Yet, and even a shadow of it remained in the fridge with several plastic bottles of coke and some rotten clementines. That was all. Kieta. Nande. It had unexpectedly vanished. I crouched and peeked all the way to the back of the fridge. But it still wasn't there. Anyway, 
I could have overlooked it, given that there wasn't much in there, and it was mostly empty. Or had I just made myself think that, and in reality, I left the sitting out. I closed the fridge and looked around to trash through the room. The large cardboard box that the hand had been put in. What had I done with it yesterday? I had the sense that I to tossed it into a corner of the room, but at any rate, my memories of last night weren't very clear, because yesterday had been more eventful than my brain capacity could handle. Not to mention that each event had made a huge impact on me, and had been cut out of been out of sorts from start to finish. Calm down. Go your head and try not to get organized. Let's think about why the hand had been there yesterday is gone. I started up my word processing software and began writing up a list of the various possibilities that occurred to me. One, I was mistaken, I left it somewhere else in my room. Two, yesterday, I myself took it outside and threw it away somewhere. Three, Yogan took it back. Four, in truth, the police searched my room and confiscated it. I think if that were the case, you'd be arrested by now. Five, the mass media broke in and stole it. Six, and didn't even access in the first place. My base had been unlocked ever since yesterday, but anyone could have entered without much difficulty. In fact, that was precisely why Shogun had been able to leave the hand in my room. Or was it too? I didn't have clear memories of when I left here to go to Overhand. My feeling of I have to save Nanami and the fear of Shogun that came on his other hand. In any case, a bunch of emotions spiraled in me, filling me up to the brim. I hadn't been cool headed at all. Maybe I had unconsciously taken the hand with me when I left and thrown it away in the trash can somewhere. Alternatively, everything about the hand had been a delusion and in truth, that it never existed to begin with. But when I opened my email, yesterday's mail from Shogun was still there. All the stuff about his present to me and whatnot was written there, plain as day. Guys, Shogun himself had referred to the hand yesterday. I had a really hard time thinking of it as being a delusion of mine. What about the possibility that the police or the media had taken it? They look at the otaku creeps like me with contempt, but the chances of that might be unexpectedly strong. I was scared to go online after yesterday's events. Even so, I couldn't keep on wanting to see it for myself, and I opened up my browser. I began by looking up the main news page on Taboo. Plus, the news sites are usually frequented. As expected, there were a bunch of articles lined up about yesterday's bedlam at the pedestrian scramble. The area of stealing ESPR is an Akibat type feral boy. An ESP show by a young new generation boy reaches curtain call. In the worst manner possible. Hearing that the magnitude 5 earthquake had taken place in Shibuya around noon on the 27th. MHK, BTS, and TV Yui 
Broadcast special reports. For TV today, I'm out for GTV. Decided to simultaneously provide a live broadcast of the show. Started around 9 p.m. However, broadcast calls soon began pouring in. Let down how he had touched his promises. Approximately 5,000 fans? Question mark. Boot for over an hour in the Shibuya Station Plaza. And fights also broke out between them. It resulted in 13 arrests. Need more text. Okay, um. This disturbance began with a prank email from Boy N. Should be a resident. And self proclaimed ESP here. Boy M. What's. What's that his friend called? I, I don't remember his name. You know the one lady spent at school, that guy? I have the feeling that his name starts with an N, so... I instantly thought that. His email in which he declared he would use clairvoyance to determine the culprit in the brutal series of incidents currently taking place in Shibuya, aka New Generation Madness, initially garnered skepticism among the broadcast stations that he sent it to. However, when the American psychic investigator Yuri Brightman contacted them, stating that he was Boyce and Guardian, TV Today and Matfuji TV believed him completely. For both TV Today and Mount Fuji TV, the broadcast ratings peaked over at 30%, 40%. Shocking number. That surpasses their popular year and programming. But this must come with the caveat that it is ultimately a number derived from a broadcast that aired around the same time as programming related to the earthquake. It cannot be said that the decision to go ahead. But the broadcast did not lead to rating success. However, YN was not an ESP or anything of the sort. The route of view was showing signs of being about to jump from the end the building countless times. But this performance ended there. The satellite reported charts prove in an attempt to at least obtain some kind of commentary about the new gen cases. But that too misfired. It is said that the board collapsed on the roof, holding a cosplay costume. It is said that the boy collapsed on the roof, holding a cosplay costume from a famous Hollywood movie, as well as a boy anime figure. According to Professor Ashiba Yoshiro of Akimasa University, an expert on otaku culture, there is an increasing number of youths who have heroic dreams without a thought for the trouble they might cause those around them. Influenced by anime and games, they must have lost the ability to distinguish between fantasy and reality and began to actually put his dreams into action. No need for psychological care. Whatever else, this was the case of a most peculiar false alarm. I didn't email the media. I'd never seen Yuri Brightman's TV show. And naturally, I knew not a thing about him. Could it all mean? Everything had been erased by Shogun after all? What for? He talked about a quest or something. But what was to be gained by pushing me to get a D-sword to the point of making the media feature me in a live broadcast? I didn't understand what Shogun wanted to do. He didn't let Nanami go with her life. Which is part of the reason why I think that Shogun is in fact not as malicious as Takumi thinks. I followed the links to read all kinds of articles, but not one of them touched on Shogun. 
There had been almost no time gap between when I borrowed that Shogun and the mass media came rushing in. Even if Shogun had used that time to flee, he would without doubt have been spotted by the media. It was still more inconceivable for someone in the wheelchair, that is Shogun, who wouldn't have been able to use his flash freely to escape the scene in such a short period of time. Furthermore, I took a look around at Chan. As I predicted, things were going well in there. They repeated my real name over and over. Chill out, Nichijo, for real. Otaku are going to get bashed again because of you. They found out what figure that he was holding. Sarah from, from Parachu. <laughs> so creepy. Otaku freaks are crying over this lol. That Nichijo guy should have just shut himself up. Instead of getting on TV or whatever. Already done. One of his classmates from yes last year came out and exposed all his personal information. It's done. They were all saying whatever the hell they wanted, taunting me without any idea of how I felt. I shouldn't was scary when it turns against you. Shogun was to blame for this as well. That aside, I thought underground news that I couldn't show on television would get posted on HN, but I didn't spot anything of the sort. Nothing was going around to how there had been one more person on the roof of all front besides me. Almost as though, yes, almost as though the person called Shogun hadn't been there from the start. Maybe the Shogun who appeared had been no more than the phantom of the real Shogun. Even if his existence was certain, it was also possible that the Shogun who'd been at Overrunt was a delusion I'd created. I skipped the line, I'm sorry. Can I... What's this? Not sure what it is, so... Um... Your backlog. All the things that should have been impossible, realistically speaking, kept happening to me. It was like a game. A world where Nanami had died, and a world where she was alive. Like, the two of them stood side by side, and I had the option to pick either one. Similar to decision points in an arrow gay, the future branched infinitively. The difference between me and ordinary people was that I had illusions of the choice that leads to an unhappy outcome. And it could simulate the event to come. Such as an event where an enemy died. Or where I should jump to death. Or where I fell from the roof of all front and died. In short. The unhappiness that visited me over and over as though someone had planned it out. Might in fact have been a mental trap I'd laid for myself. In the midst of a boring and unchanging everyday life, I wish to emigrate to a world as stimulating as a game, and I unconsciously showed it to myself in the form of delusions. Possible. I didn't possess such any desire. What about ESO then, I, I would think? At least... I'd say an instant no thanks to any simulation that could scare or send me. 
っていうかどれだけ想像力豊かなんだよ Even all the things I was thinking of now will ultimately no more than idiotic childish delusions. I sighed. I leaned against my chair's back crest, looking distractedly up at the ceiling. Reality was indeterminate. Everything began to appear like a lie. The world called I was so hollow. 